From the moment I heard my first love story, I started looking for you, not knowing how blind this was. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere, they're inside of each other all along. As this poem from Rumi suggests, our lovers are reflections of who we are inside. And in my case, this is really true. So here I am to share my love story of the banker, the chef, and the healer. My first husband was a banker. He was an Oxford man, 6'3", gorgeous green-gray eyes, and a six-pack that even a professional athlete would be envious of. <laughs> With his dashing demeanor and his Queen's English, he was the quintessential stiff upper-lipped Englishman. He was never emotional, never cracked under pressure or anything like that. He was a bona fide James Bond. He had everything under control all the time. Me, at this time, being married to him, my focus was all about financial and career success. As Marno mentioned, I was an up-and-coming executive at the Walt Disney Company. On the surface, our life was charmed. We were a power couple. We had a 4,000 square foot apartment overlooking beautiful Hong Kong Harbor. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's, it's really beautiful. We had, my, my wardrobe was full of designer clothing. We traveled to exotic locations, staying at six star hotels. My life seemed charmed. And to top it all off, I just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. My life couldn't get any better until one fateful day, everything changed. We had just gotten back from a safari trip to Kenya. And as I was going through my office voicemail, I came across a strange message from a woman who claimed to be having an affair with my husband for the past year and a half. A year and a half? How could I have not known? I was so incredulous that I was just about to hit the delete button then she started talking about details of my life and I realized she's actually talking about me. So I, c I felt the blood in my veins drain. I turned pale white and I ran out of the office crying. Life wasn't perfect, but it seemed pretty perfect at the time. The next nine months, I pretty much sat in my room smoking a pack of cigarettes a day in my non-working hours, of course trying to figure out what's next, until I received another phone call, <laughs> this time from my very best friend, and she had just found out that he had never stopped seeing this other woman while we were supposedly trying to work things out. I knew that was it, it was time to go. It takes two to tango, and he obviously wasn't in it, so I decided to leave. I packed my things, quit my job, all the things that meant so much to me left it all behind because it all felt like a lie, hollow. I moved to this magnificent city, New York City, <laughs> and fell madly in love with another man. This time, a tall, dark, sensual Italian, oozing with sensuality. Until that moment, until I met him, I didn't realize I'd completely shut down the sensual and sexual side of me. I was too busy with my checklist and getting ahead and, and my career that I never really stopped to feel pleasure. I mean, really feel pleasure. With this man, my life was filled with carnal pleasures. He was my chef. We visited three-star Michelin restaurants across the world, attended debauched parties where species close to extinction were on the menu. My, my, my life was filled with carnal pleasures, and I had more of the taste of the forbidden apple than I care to remember now. Then, I got pregnant. We were madly in love. Our families were blending nicely, so we thought everything's gonna be just fine until the kids found out, and they went berserk. Well, his kids found out, and they went berserk. They felt thre threatened by the whole situation. And then I saw my chef slowly crumble. He'd always been wrestling with the guilt of having left his children through the divorce, as his father had left him when he was nine years old. And through the struggle of this, four months into my pregnancy, I decided I couldn't do it. I didn't have the courage to be a single mom with two kids, two toddlers in tow. So I decided to get an abortion. As I lied there on the cold clinical bed, 
I was crying and crying and I couldn't stop. The nurse with her latex gloved hands wiped my tears away and said to me, don't do this to yourself. I couldn't stop crying. My soul was torn apart. Having already felt life grow inside of me and then already having felt the feathering touches of this new life, I felt like I murdered my own child. I had blood on my hands. <sighs> Needless to say, um, my relationship with my chef, which was completely built on sex, pleasure, and sensuality, didn't last. I couldn't feel those things anymore, let alone appreciate it. And then one fateful day, again, another phone call, this time from my cousin. She apparently had just come back from having lunch with my chef's girlfriend, and I wasn't at that lunch. That was it. I decided all men cheat and they can't be trusted. That was my conclusion. <laughs> but really, I was searching for a deeper meaning behind my heartache. What was this all for? I studied Kabbalah, I studied Vipassana meditation, transcendental meditation, feng shui, as Arno mentioned, dan yoga, and through all of these spiritual paths, I'd come to one conclusion, the divinity with inside of me. I'm the creator of my life. If I wanted to have truth in my life, I must be true to who I am. If I wanted to have love in my life, I need to love myself. During this time, during this soul searching, I met now my current partner, my healer. We were friends for a few years actually before we, we started dating romantically and through his kindness and patience, he soothed my wounds and opened my heart where I can come to him where I can trust again. But what I really learned during this time was self-love and self-compassion. I realized I, I didn't have to be a successful career woman or a sexy lover to be loved. I was worthy of love just the way I am. Cuero shamans say that life can be perceived at four different levels. The snake, the jaguar, the, the hummingbird, and the eagle. My time with my banker was a time of the snake. Cold-hearted quest for security. Um, never emotional. And that was my banker. Secondly, the jaguar. The jaguar is all about emotions and pleasure and sensuality. And I had the full range of that with my chef. The third is the hummingbird. This tiny bird migrates from Canada to Brazil every year. And in this epic journey, you know, you get to realize the deeper meaning behind life, the ups and downs of it. You take it all in. My time of soul searching was my time of the hummingbird. Finally, the eagle. The eagle flies high above the mountains and can see far, far away, as well as a tiny little mouse scurrying on the, on, on the forest floor. Eagles are a light onto themselves as, those around, as well as those around them because they have peace and wisdom in their heart. Because they understand beyond the highest peaks lie the deepest valleys. So in the end, I did find meaning in my heartache. And through self-love and self-compassion, I now can feel deep gratitude for my banker, my chef, and the healer as it was because of the love of these men that I able, was able to grow to become the woman I am today. Thank you for listening, and I hope that your lives are also filled with the focus of the snake, the sensuality of the jaguar, the soul of the hummingbird, and the peace and wisdom of the eagle. Thank you.